Well, I said I wouldn't record it, but why not? I'm not going to go through these problems one by one. There isn't going to be time for that. I'll just talk about them briefly and try to point us in the right direction. So a problem like one is hopefully relatively straightforward. You take y prime, it's supposed to be a y plus one. I mean, and in fact, I feel like every time I say I'm not going to do something, I just immediately do it. But y prime is capital C times e to the x. I know this is not visible at the moment for online students. Y is C e to the X minus one. And what we want is Y prime equals Y plus one. Maybe, maybe I was sharing this. Well, anyway, we want y prime as y plus one, and you know, y plus one is c e to the x minus one plus one is c e to the x, and that's supposed to be y prime. And it is y prime. And then there is some kind of condition we want to be satisfied. We want y of zero to be five. Now we know what y is. So we know that y of zero is c minus one. e to the zero is one, c e to the zero minus one is c minus one. And we want that to be five, so we want C to be six. Now the next few problems are solving equations. And these I genuinely won't go into depth on. I'll just do the first step in A. You've got just the x on the right side of the equation. You've got just the independent variable. My screen sharing is paused. Zoom is being weird. So sorry to any online students. I have no idea what you're seeing. This can be solved simply using integration. I mean, I say simply. Um, integration can be difficult, but I hope that, that integrating x to the one half is relatively straightforward. This is in contrast to B and to C. 
Um, B and C are both separation of variables problems. Um, so dy dx equals y times the sine of x. We can bring the y over to the left. We can bring the dx over to the right. We can integrate both sides and solve for y. C is kind of a... Uh, I mean, C is also um, separation of variables, y cubed dy dx. equals y to the fourth plus one times cosine to the x. We can bring the y's over to the left. And we can bring the dx over to the right, and we can integrate. And now I am, um, I mean, I don't want my differential equations to be, I mean, it's not calculus four. At the same time, I certainly hope that students retain something from calculus. Um, This integral on the left can be dealt with using a U substitution. So scrolling down. So this is a word problem, but we should, uh, let's see, we should not be intimidated by it. We can separate our variables here. One thousand D of E D of T equals again the screen share keeps pausing seemingly at random uh, five thousand minus a hundred X. Not a hundred X, surely a hundred V. So to do separation of variables, we can just divide the entire right hand side over. That will give us a one on the right. And then we can multiply both sides by D T. And now we can solve for the velocity. 
by integrating. And again, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean with these integrals, but it is a differential equations class at some point. I have to assume that, that my students do have the prerequisites. Um, this is also a U substitution. We can do that and then we'll end up with a natural law. Screen sharing is paused again. I have no idea why or what that means. I will hope that you're seeing uh, what you're supposed to be seeing. Here again, um, we spent a whole um, section looking at population models. This is, um, again, a separable differential equation. I'm afraid it's kind of, um, kind of a nasty one, but again, I can't help it. This is, uh, this is the calculus that shows up when you're looking at these population models. dp dt equals 10p minus 2 e squared. Um, and the reason I said this is kind of nasty is we separate our variables and then we integrate and the integration is by parts, which is not not the funnest thing in the world. We've got, um, we can pull a 2p out. And as I say, this is linear. You have to do it using a part. I mean, this is a rational function and it's par. So you have to break that fraction up. A over 2P plus B over 5 minus P. And you find A and you find B. And you fight your way through. So fixed points, um, I'll just do this problem. Dx dt is x squared, x minus one, x plus two. I always think the easiest way, oh, well, first of all, we need to find fixed points. Fixed points is where this equals zero, which is at zero and one and at negative two. 
And I always think the easiest way of analyzing the derivative is to graph it. I mean, I feel you you like you read textbooks or whatever, and they're talking about oh creating sign charts and stuff, and that's not bad, but it feels like maybe it's progressively a little uh, more obsolete every year. We'll just graph this thing, x squared, x minus one, x plus two. So here's what the derivative looks like. And the easiest way to think of this is to think of the number line I'm creating as being the x-axis. So the derivative is there. And then I ask, where is the derivative positive and where is it negative? Well, it's positive when it's above the x-axis. It's negative when it's below the x-axis. And then we're asked what exactly is the question. We're probably asked to keep Clearly label fixed points. Okay, we did that. For each fixed point, classify its stability. So I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be an ogre about this. I did notice in the homework people saying stable when they meant asymptotically stable, asymptotically stable. Again, those sound like they should be the same thing, but there are technical differences between them. So we'll say asymptotically stable and this fixed point is unstable. And again, I'm just, there are only really four cases. And this first case, where they're both pointing in is asymptotically stable, and these other cases are unstable. And if you want, you could break unstable down further. And call that semi-stable, as long as you understand that semi-stability is a type of instability and not, you know, a third option that's halfway between unstable and asymptotically stable. And then, These last problems are always the most missed, but they're the most missed because students wildly overcomplicate things. Look at C, X of zero equals four. What happens as time passes? So 
So I not be or be labeled a fixed point. So I, oh, yes, I did. I just things are so cluttered that they weren't immediately visible. So x of zero is four. So we start somewhere here. The arrow's pointing to the right. So we go to the right. We go to infinity. Yeah. Uh, if x of zero is negative one, So we're starting here, and then the arrow is pointing to the left, and we never jump over fixed points. So we go to negative two and stop. And the limit as x approaches infinity is negative two. What was the d? It was x of zero equals? Uh, was x of zero equals negative oh. one? Second order linear differential equation. We haven't, uh, I haven't graded the homework on this, so it can't be on the test. So I'll post an announcement verifying that. So I mean, kind of a short test, or I shouldn't say that because some of these problems are prob the array of the time consuming, like B, where you have to do a partial fraction decomposition, that can take some time, but not a huge number of problems. And um, I guess just a brief test taking, it's studying advice. If there aren't a lot of problems, you really need to be able to at least attempt all of them. Like if you mess a problem up and only get seven out of 10, whatever, that's not the end of the world. But if you just leave a problem blank and there are like seven problems on the test or whatever, then that's a real problem. I mean, you're down a letter grade from that alone. So, um, Again, summarizing what this thing is. Verifying solutions using integration to solve differential equations, using separation of variables to solve differential equations, more solving differential equations with word problems attached this time. Both the models are separation of variables. And then looking at fixed points. And in terms of calculus, You know, if there's any kind of population problem, there, I mean, at, or at least the one on the test, you really should be able to do a basic partial fraction decompositions. By basic, I mean that, you know, everything factors easily and there are no repeated roots or anything like that. And you should be able to do um, U substitution. And I mean, I guess I'd say you should just if you've passed calc to this, you should be able to do integration by parts. But I don't think that usually shows up. 
in the separation of variable problems. So if you need help with anything, or if you want me to look at your work, you can send me an email my way um, today or tomorrow. If I don't hear from you uh, before Thursday, I'll see you Thursday.